It's time to find out how science fiction legends are made. So welcome to the Parallel Universe Laboratory. And today we will take a closer look at the work of Olaf Stapledon, British futurologist and writer, known for his works in the field of science fiction, who created his outstanding works in the early 20th century. His writing style was characterized by complexity and detail, and his prose is rich and poetic. Thanks to this, he was able to draw such grandiose and full-of-life pictures that they captured the mind of the reader, making him think about the vastness of the universe. The author was not just a writer. He was a philosopher and a dreamer who lived in his own fanatical world. For example, the novel Star Maker appears as a large-scale creation in the form of an intergalactic saga. Many different worlds sweep before the reader, describing the life cycles of planets, stars, galaxies, nebulae, our entire cosmos, and finally, the star maker himself and the string of his creations. This is the story of a nameless hero who suddenly finds his consciousness drifting through the universe. He quickly realizes that he can move through time and space and soon learns to control his flight. The narrator discovers a species of human, like beings with similar lives and problems, and he manages to become attached to one of them. Soon, both of them learn to leave their bodies and travel together. Gradually, they form a group mind that includes representatives of all the sentient beings they have found. They realize that with their minds, they can not only travel faster than light, but they can also travel forward and backward in time. Such travel allows them to see not only the origin of the universe, but also its evolution and culmination. It allows them to observe the struggles of life in the cosmos. And there is a struggle. Because the mental journeys of wanderers, at first, lead them only to worlds experiencing a kind of crisis. Industrial society leads to class and national conflicts. Scientific progress undermines old spiritual truths and ideologies of both extreme individualism and collectivism rage. The narrator reports on various planets full of diverse life forms, including plants and large intelligence ships, and how they deal with crises very similar to those on Earth at the time. Eventually, the group's minds learn how to contact more advanced civilizations. Eventually, leading among them is a symbiotic race of fish and aquatic arachnids who seem to have figured out both the technological and spiritual game well. They can do space travel. Their minds are cleansed of attachments and distractions and realize the interconnectedness of things. After that, we want to check what our fish in the aquarium are capable of. So at each level of civilization ascension, there are its own pitfalls, technological catastrophe, or the temptation of interstellar empire, which is very similar to the hypothesis of the Great Filter, which was much later expressed by British economist and futurologist Robin Hanson. Eventually, the group mind witnesses terrible wars that force enlightened civilizations to become warlike. As it turns out, even stars possess intelligence and vehemently object to being manipulated by planetary authorities, nearly leading to galactic catastrophe. Nearly leading to galactic catastrophe. Nebulae also have minds. Everything has a mind, but the progress of technology and spirituality, including telepathy, eventually gets rid of war and leads to a galactic utopia. Except that for every intelligent race that got to the galactic utopia, there are hundreds of others that got close to it and died, and millions of others never managed to get beyond their planet. Energy is running out. The laws of thermodynamics are doing their thing. All the galaxies of the cosmos will not be able to unite, having reached the last level. The energy of the stars runs out. Populations everywhere dwindle until finally they become too microscopic to maintain the unity of the world mind. Gradually, the clarity of the cosmic mind fades. Finally, it collapses. 
and the few remaining worlds survive until the reserves of energy and matter necessary for life are completely exhausted. Then, life in the universe disappears. All that's left is lifeless and increasingly cold matter. But this is not the end of everything. The cosmic mind realizes the creator of the stars is someone who created the universe and observes the plight of most of his creation, but has no motivation to intervene to remedy the situation. Further, upon returning to human form, the narrator realizes that despite his insignificance compared to the immense creation, he is still a part of it. Whatever power and opportunity he has been given, no matter what happens, one must still keep going. Keep the events of our lives may elevate us, but underneath it all, we are still human beings, and that is the most important part of us. The narrator returns to his own life and goes on with his life. He knows what will happen to Earth and our species, he knows it's not the happiest story, but he intends to play his part in it anyway. Yes, Olaf Stapledon was ahead of his time in many technical matters. The book's influence has been wide-ranging. As well as influencing a number of famous authors, it is in some ways responsible for the science fiction concept of the big object known as the Dyson Sphere. In fact, the novel introduces a number of scientific concepts and philosophical musings AMGGI Intelligent Evolution. The author explores the idea of evolution beyond Earth by imagining different species of intelligent aliens, each with their own unique biological characteristics. The idea of a galactic federation in which there are space settlements in the form of artificial hollow planets. Flat ones have not yet been observed, and there are regular planets that are used as interstellar ships propelled by directed atomic explosions. The concept of a liquid propellant missile with an atomic warhead. The concept of nuclear warfare using atomic missiles and interstellar warfare by various intelligent civilizations, virtual reality, colonization of galaxies, existence of planets in double star systems. The concept of parallel worlds based on quantum theory actually predicted by Everett's Many Worlds interpretation. There are some ideas here that have become much more common in later science fiction. In particular, the idea that Humanity and other life forms are moving towards some kind of group mind, a global, galactic, or even universal consciousness that would represent a kind of a utopia. Such ideas can be found in Isaac Asimov in his Foundation series of books. And in Stanislaw, but perhaps one of the most significant metaphysical ideas in the book is that the Star Maker is a powerful creative force or godlike figure who not only creates, but constantly experiments and evolves the universe. All these bold and profound ideas have helped the Star Maker gain popularity among fans of such genre. This critically acclaimed book is more of a philosophical treatise on science, human nature, and the creator than a traditional novel. Stapledon's descriptions and socio-philosophical musings on galactic empires, symbiotic alien life forms, genetic engineering, ecology, and overpopulation have inspired a number of science fiction writers, including Arthur C. Clarke. In conclusion, Olaf Stapledon's novel The Star Maker is a compelling exploration of cosmic ideas that effortlessly interweaves deep philosophy and science. The novel differs from other works of the genre, not only in its ambitious narrative that crosses universes and millennia, but also in its thoughtful analysis of civilization, consciousness, and the nature of being. At its core, The Star Maker makes you think, breaks down paradoxical barriers, and provides the impetus to expand our understanding of the universe more than science fiction. It is a treatise on existence, an exploration of the potential inherent in the universe, and ultimately a guide to understanding our cosmic insignificance and significance at the same time.